Welcome to Daddy Issues, a podcast by Fathers and Family Center of Indianapolis, Indiana. This is our inaugural episode, sort of a preview, uh, a teaser, if you will. I'm Jason Aquisto. I'll be hosting this podcast along with my friend, Larry Smith. Larry is the president and CEO of Fathers and Family Center. Hello, Larry. How you doing? I'm great, Jason. How are you doing? Great. I'm so excited we're going to do this podcast. This is something that we've been talking about for a long time, but really the vision uh, comes down to, uh, to to you and the organization itself. And so as we launch this uh, Daddy Issues, what what do you want this podcast to be about? Great question. You know, as you and I have uh, discussed it, you know, we're we're two just regular guys, two dads, uh, and we are uh, just trying to figure out uh, life in general, but certainly life uh, as a father. And, you know, for me, um, there's a kind of a wide spectrum here. On, on the one hand, you know, we'll talk about some fun and lighthearted stuff, kind of kind of the uh, the foibles of, of being a dad. On the other hand, you know, there's some serious uh, issues going on. Uh, you know, being a parent is uh, the most rewarding uh, and also the toughest job that, you know, certainly I've, I've ever done. And uh, so at, at the end of the day, hopefully we can uh, provide uh, some levity, uh, but also some insight uh, and hopefully some help uh, to fathers who, who just want to uh, get a perspective on, on what it means to be a dad. Yeah, it's the greatest job ever, but it's also the hardest job ever. And, oh yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I always wanted this job and it's the best I ever had. And, you know, I'll never quit this job. You know, it's all those things. <laughs> so real quick, let's set the table. So I've got one son and he is 19 and he is mm-hmm. a freshman in college. So what's your situation? So I have uh, three uh, kids and a, and a fourth as a bonus. So uh, I was a teenage dad. And so I became a uh, dad right before I turned 17. My uh, oldest is now uh, 34 uh, and um, is a mom and married, has uh, given me two grandchildren. Uh, very, very excited about them uh, as well. And then her husband, of course, my son-in-law, that's what I meant by a, a bonus uh, child. Uh, yeah. And then also a, a 17-year-old daughter who's a senior in high school, and then uh, her brother who is uh, 15 years old and a sophomore in high school. So you've got several different situations going on. Fatherhood is so many different things to different people. And the choices we make or the 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 way we come to be a father and also not just would, were you a teenager, but that was a different time. That was the 20th century. So oh, that was, yeah. the, right? Way different. Yeah. A lot of the things in the world were different. So all these things come to bear on on being a father. and um, And you're a grandfather too. Do yes. you want me to call you Poppy or something? I don't know. What do you, what do your grandkids call you? You know, it, it, excuse me. It's so funny that you asked that question. Uh, also, I need to make a correction. My daughter's now 35, not 34. It's hard to keep okay. that. Okay. They're just kind of doing a math in my head. Uh, but I, I have them call me G-Paw. Uh, I am insistent that there's no brand in my yeah. title. Uh, and so it, it, it's funny. Last night, uh, I was watching the grandkids along with my two older ones. And so my son uh, asked, uh, two younger ones rather, and so my son asked me, well, what does the G stand for? Uh, and it took me a minute, and I said, great, right? It's great. It's not grand, but it's yeah. great, Paul. He just kind of rolled yeah. his eyes. <laughs> so, but you're making this up as you go along. I mean, you know, it, it, that's the beauty of it is that there's no wrong answer there, but that right. was a pretty excellent answer, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, you know, you mentioned earlier this being a job that you would never quit. Uh, I'm sure though there there are times that my kids want to fire me. I'm not going to quit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or at least put you on probation. Right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, to write me up a couple of times. So here we are in the year 2022, and we've got the the world the way it is, and mm-hmm. you know, bringing up a kid, being a role model being a parent, being responsible, being conscientious when it comes to being a dad. What what is in your gut and and what is your passion right now that you'd like to express in our in our conversations on this podcast? You know, um back to it being the most rewarding and also the toughest job. Uh, one thing that I frequently think about is how different it is. I mean, you mentioned it, you know, being the 21st century and you know, I, uh, I'm 52 and, you know, 
mentally, emotionally, I feel more like 72. Now, physically, probably more like 32. But, you know, my <laughs> my outlook, I work out all the time and all that. But, you, you know, my my outlook um, it is certainly shaped very much by, uh, you know, my parents obviously were boomers. My dad was not in, involved in, in my life. But I, I, I have more of that sort of boomer outlook. And so it's, it's difficult for me to adjust to um, a lot of the thought processes, uh, some of the behaviors, uh, mm -hmm. and so on of teenagers, my teenagers in, in particular. And so it's, it's a, you know, for lack of a better phrase, it is a negotiation. Um, I know that uh, a lot of times if I'm trying to really just Im impose my will and to say, well, why are we doing this? this way because I said so. Um, now, ultimately, they will acquiesce. Um, but I have found over time that that doesn't, that that's not the most effective way uh, to parent. And so over time, you know, there's my, my older daughter will tell you that I am a different parent <laughs> from mm -hmm. when uh, she right. was a little girl. Uh, I would hope so. Yes, very, very, very different. It was more sort of command and control when when she was little, whereas with these two teens, um, it, it, it is uh, in some ways more of a negotiation. Something I think about a lot because having a son that has a lot of the same interests as, as I do, to me, it's it's not ideal to try to be to be friends with your your son, your child. And that was always something I, I saw in other people. Sometimes I'd say, oh, I'm, I'm never going to be that way. I'm going to be the parent, the father. And the, but still, it's kind of hard to resist that. How do you feel about being being best friends with your kids? Is that a hard thing to avoid? Yeah, uh, it is, you know. Uh... A few years ago, not, my son again is 15, um, probably four years ago, so he was around 11, um, I we were having some kind of a discussion, um, not really heated, I mean, he's, he's, he's very o obedient um, and all that, but we were having a discussion, um, and I made uh, the comment that, you know, I am not your friend, I am your father. Um, had I known what the ramifications of that statement were going to be, I, I, I <laughs> I would have said it differently now, yeah, you know, because it, it's something that really deeply affected him and he, he'll bring it up from, from time to time. Well, you know, you, you remember you said, you're not my friend, you know, you're, you're, you're my father. And I, I didn't mean it in the way that he received it, mm -hmm. um, or at least the way that I perceived that, that he received it. But, um, but it's, it's, it's tough. I, I meant simply to say, Hey, you know, we're in another phrase that I've used is that we're not peers. I mean, the same thing that, that you mm -hmm. said, um, but as they get uh, older, the, you know, the nature of the relationship changes. Um, and again, they're not quite, the two younger ones are not quite to adulthood yet, but it, it is, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, because you, you know, you certainly want to be friendly with them above all, you want them to know that you love them and would do anything for them. I tell, you know, I tell them all the time, you know, I, I'd give my life, uh, for you. Um, but kids don't necessarily require that, right. They just want to have a good time, you know, with, uh, with their uh, dad. And, and uh, so anyway, uh, I, I just, um, I, I wish I had, you know, I think the golf term is mulligan, right? I wish I had a do over with, yeah. with that. One. So I understand exactly what you meant by that. And we, we know what we mean to say, and we think it came out that way and um, it hit wrong or it yeah. hit in, inaccurately there. So right. uh, what do you think you should have said, looking back, if you could do it again, what, if you don't mind me asking and yeah. I mean, we should just go ahead and stop saying it, if you don't mind me asking, because this is going to be a personal conversation. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's what the podcast is about. Time for a quick break. You're listening to Daddy Issues Podcast. We'll be right back. Again, it's Daddy Issues, a podcast from Fathers and Families Center in Indianapolis. I'm Jason, and this is Larry Smith, the CEO and president of Fathers and Families. And I was asking, what should you have said looking back instead of I'm not your friend, I'm your father? Yeah, I think what I should have said was something along the lines of I am here uh, to be your your father that involves being your protector, your uh, provider. Um, and, you know, ultimately, as you become uh, a man, you, you know, our, our relationship will change. And, and again, that might sound pretty heavy for uh, an 11 year old. But, you, you know, I have to, of course, everybody thinks their kids are geniuses. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you, you know, I, I think that kids in general, uh, because of the time that they're growing up in, you know, they've endured a pandemic and, and if they're old enough, even going back to the Great Recession, all these crazy things have happened in the in the country and in the world, um, that he was emotionally mature enough to understand uh, if I had expressed it 
in a better way. I think that he would have un understood that I was not saying that, y you know, you, you are just um, someone who I can disregard, just do what I say, um, you, your opinion doesn't matter, doesn't count. Um, I, I think if I had said that in, in a different way, he would have received it uh, better. I mean, you were a parent at a young age, and so is it accurate to say you maybe were serious, more serious than you, than you oh, could have been? Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, part of that, I think, was insecurity, um, right? I mean, I, I was young. We essentially grew up together. Uh, yeah. And so, um, you, know, you know, and so I, I certainly felt at the time a need to really assert that I was the parent and you are the child. Uh, but I think that a lot of that was born of the fact that obviously it was because I was first time parent, but also because I, w I was so young. I think subconsciously, I really felt the need to to assert my authority. Mm -hmm. Man, it, it, uh, it, it's tough. And there's so much that happens in real time that you don't plan for. Obviously, you know, we all remember being handed a little baby and we're like, okay, well, what do I do now? And there's no book or yeah. guide. I mean, there are obviously there are things to help and people to help, but there's no right answer and there's no roadmap that someone went down exactly the same way. Thank God for my siblings that I can that they're all older and I can mm -hmm. uh, get help with parenting from them. But uh, and friends, of course. But I mean, geez, it's just not it's not easy. This is not an, an easy job. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I had, um, of course, my uh, mom was around at the time. Uh, my grandparents, uh, unfortunately, they're all deceased now, along with my my father. And, you know, as, as I stated, um, you know, so. My father, well, so my parents were divorced when I was, you know, very, very young, four or five, maybe. Um, and he was not uh, involved in my life for the most part. So I didn't really have him to rely on. Uh, mm -hmm. My grandfather uh, was was very helpful my, uh, uh, on my um, mom's side. Uh, and so, you know, I think that um, it's a situation you said, you know, you had friends uh, over time, of course, as my um, friends began to have children them, themselves. Uh, it was interesting that they began to look to me uh, because <laughs> I had, had been, you know, doing it for for a few years. Yeah. And so it's a, it's an interesting kind of uh, dynamic shift uh, that happened over time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the first kid to get a car. You're like, what's yeah. it like? <laughs> oh, or maybe not. That's cool. just don't wreck it. Yeah. <laughs> well, too late for that. I've wrecked a few times. So, you know, this is going to be a conversation about about lighthearted things, but also serious things. I mean, this is the the world that we live in right now. But I mean, let's just pick out one thing. Like, what what's something that you feel like is a is a huge challenge that we need to react to and and parent, uh, you know, in the midst of is it, you know is it um, I'm just going to jump in. Is is it racism? Is hmm. it um, is it a political landscape? Is it a um, is it a sense of social justice? Is it a sense of um, you know what what from your perspective is a is a big issue right now being a dad? Yeah, a, a great question and and a, a hard question. I think it's all of the uh, above, frankly. Um, also, though, um, I, I think that it begins with. Uh, trying to establish a sound moral foundation for the kids, and I know you know people will define that in different ways. Uh, I'm a pretty devout Christian, so I'm going to define it from that lens. And I know that there's not one flavor of, of Christian. I'm you know certainly very very aware of that. Um, but yeah, you know, so dealing with uh, racism, you know, we, that has kind of come to the fore since the uh, the murder of George Floyd uh, in in May of 2020, and yeah, I find that. You know, really odd because, you know, for me, I, I'm not sure why that was a tipping point uh, as, as a black man who has been very aware of, of police brutality uh, since I was young. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's in some ways kind of a head scratch, but yeah, that's that's something that's difficult uh, on the political realm. You know, I'll just go ahead and say that I, I refer to myself as a, a radical centrist, but for me, this issue is so beyond partisan politics. It's really about, and this is going to sound, you know, maybe hyperbolic or to some or hokey to others, but this is really about the preservation of democracy, uh, and I don't think that you can have democracy in a real sense 
if you don't begin with a common set of facts. This is something I talk about all the time. I write a weekly column, as you know, for the Indianapolis Recorder, African American newspaper. Uh, and I keep going back to this point. There are things, there are a lot of things I very much criticize as Democrats for, certainly many things I criticize Republicans for. But at the end of the day, as, as a father, um, it is my job to share my perspective with my kids. Uh, and as they get older, they'll form their own uh, opinion. And I can I can absolutely guarantee you there are many things about which we do not agree, mm -hmm. yeah. um, no matter how much I want them to have my view. But at the end of the day, we're just there to shepherd them. They're, they're loaned by God to us, but they're going to be whoever they're going to be. Right. And thank God for that, because who needs another one of us? Right. Right. Absolutely. But no, but seriously, that's <laughs> that's something that I've thought about. And now as I see my son, He's 19. He has his own ideas. A lot right. of them are versions of, of what, like you said, what we pass on to them and then make it their own. But I completely agree with you. Um, it's no surprise the way that you describe yourself. Same here. And it, because yeah. you have to start with a common set of, of facts. Uh, and this is not a political podcast, but yep. let's start with that because that is a difficulty I see in being a parent. And my heart goes out to anyone who has kids that are younger mm -hmm. or more impressionable or more in need of guidance at this time. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, again, I'm a grandfather. So I think about, you know, my uh, my grandson is almost two and a half. My my granddaughter is almost a year and a half. And, you know, I wonder not only what kind of world in which especially my younger kids are going to grow up in, mm -hmm. but then, you know, my, my grandkids who, who are even younger than they are. And so I, I just try to figure out, you know, my place in the world, how I can um, do what I can to help it become, uh, from my perspective, a, a yeah. better uh, place. That's going to in involve a, uh, it, it's it's a very, very di diverse world, not only in country, not only uh, racially, socioeconomically, politically, and we have to learn to figure out this democratic experiment. It's the longest uh, standing democracy in history, and it's kind of fraying at, at the edges, and, and it's something that we need uh, to really focus on and, uh, and get, uh, get, get it together. So raising kids, no big deal. You know, you got this environment that's volatile or that's we, – we've got to get a hold of it. And so when you try to parent, you know, your kids and bring up uh, a woman of color and, in this world and a, and a young man of color and in this world, that's got to be the biggest challenge I could imagine. It, it, it is. And, you know, it's, it's a balance. On the one hand, I want them – really to focus on being kids, uh, on being students, um, and uh, having having an enjoyable uh, childhood uh, to the extent that we, we can make that happen. At the same time, I don't want to shield them from all adversity. Uh, and because uh, I, I don't think that that is wise. I mean, some of the, I don't know about you, but you know, some of the kids I grew up with who were the most sheltered mm -hmm. uh, were, uh, shall we say, not as well prepared for the oh, yeah of yeah. the world. And so uh, it's, it's, it's a balance certainly for, for all uh, parents, but in particular for African-American parents, it's like, well, you know, how much should we talk about uh, racism and structural inequality um, now, you know, because they are both, um, you know, citizens of, of the world. And obviously along with my, my uh, older daughter and she and her husband have their hands full, you know, raising two, mm -hmm. you know, younger uh, ones. And so we don't uh, engage in, in discussions uh, as frequently as, as I would like, but I understand, you know, she's, she's got her, her own life. Whereas with the two younger ones, um, sometimes I guess when they're feeling pity, they, they bring issues to me <laughs> and want to, want to discuss uh, something that is going on uh, in, in the world and uh, just to get, kind of get my reaction or I, I will raise issues to them. You know, I'm, I'm an NPR, I'm just a news junkie in particular, mm -hmm. but in, the morning, the afternoon, you know, if I'm taking them to school, you know, typically uh, NPR will be on and there'll be a topic that comes on. And I'll be like, well, you know, are you guys discussing this in school? It's, you know, yeah, that or no. That. <laughs> you know, so, whereas mm -hmm, other times mm -hmm. there are issues that they really want to talk about and, and they'll, they'll bring them to me. Yeah. that Now that obviously is after you've You've said their name three, four times and realized they had the AirPods in. And so, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, right. hey, 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 ask your right. question. Yeah. So. Absolutely. This is Daddy Issues Podcast. We'll be right back. Tell us a little bit quickly about what um, what the the mission is of the Fathers and Family Center in Indianapolis. And uh, yeah, just what, what's what's happening there? 
Appreciate that. So Fathers and Families Center is uh, 29 years old. Uh, and so obviously we're, we're gearing up at the end of this year for our 30th uh, next year. I succeeded uh, the founding president and CEO, Dr. Wallace McLaughlin. Uh, initially, the center was focused on um, young men in their late teens to their late 20s. In fact, there used to be an age restriction, basically you know, 25, 26, somewhere in there. Um, Today, there is no age restri uh, restriction. In fact, our average age is closer to about 35 or so now, mm -hmm. although we're working diligently to in ensure that we are addressing the wants, the needs, the desires, the concerns of younger men as well. But we um, we help the at, at least a plurality of them uh, have not graduated from high school. So we help them with high school equivalency. Um, a lot of them have had challenges with what I call the criminal law system. And so we help them with that. Um, some of them are behind on child support. So we help them with all of those uh, kinds of things, administrative, legal, those kinds of things. In addition uh, to that, we provide job training. And so, um, you know, CDL, um, commercial driver's license, uh, forklift training, all that. We're going to expand that to include things like um, uh, coding uh, and things of that nature. But we help them with job training and then we connect them with employers. We have dozens of employers who we connect them with. But I would argue that most importantly, what we do is help with relationships. And so that is the relationship with their children and also the relationship with their children's mother, even if they're no longer intimately involved. And so we address what we call the four Ps, the person, the parent, the partner, and the provider. Gotcha. Yeah. And I love that key piece of the relationships there because you know, all the all of the nuts and bolts of moving in a positive direction. Those are great, but really it's about the glue, the relationships. We all really want to be close to the people. And all we really want is, is for a parent to be there right. and, and for our, or for the partner to be there. Co-parenting is, is becoming, uh, is being normalized and Absolutely. I'm all for it. Right. Yeah. So not, not only that, but, you know, blended uh, families are something like 40% of all families in America sure. are blend, blended families. And, you know, at, at some point in the not too distant future, that that's probably going to be the majority of families. I, you know, I'm a, a divorced dad. Um, and I, I literally, literally thank God that uh, my former wife and I co-parent very, very uh, effectively. We don't mm. argue about pickup times and they're supposed to be with me. This, you know, I, I just, um, yeah. I, I know a lot of couples for whom that is not true. And I'm just very, very grateful that in my case, um, that's, that's, uh, that we, yeah, can that's a gift. Very, very well. That's really a gift that makes it easier. So again, this is Daddy Issues, a podcast by Fathers and Families Center in Indianapolis. I'm Jason and I'm talking with my friend Larry Smith, who's the president and CEO of uh, Fathers and Families Center. So this podcast, we want this to be encouraging. We want this to be something that, uh, is topical, entertaining, and just be a companion for, for the hardest job out there, uh, which is being a dad. Larry, thank you for the idea and for uh, helping bring this to life. Let's remind people of the website address for Fathers and Families. So it's uh, www.fathersandfamiliescenter, all one word, fathersandfamiliescenter.org. This podcast, Daddy Issues, will be available wherever you get your podcasts and on social media. And I, I hope to make it also available on that website, Fathers and Families. This is Daddy Issues. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.